Greetings, folks. I'm Rod Machado. Thank you for tuning in to part two of this short video series on maneuvering speed. And I, I hope you had a chance to watch part one. Otherwise, you're going to be staring at me like a dog looking at a fan. In other words, you're going to be confused. So off to part one with you on how maneuvering speed is determined if you haven't already watched it. Then again, since I'm a big softy, I'm going to review part one with you anyway. In our previous video, we learned that the g-force experienced by the airplane is derived by the ratio of all the upward acting forces on the airplane, which we'll call lift, divided by all the downward acting forces on the airplane, which we'll call weight. Simply stated, lift divided by weight gives us the g-force experienced by the airplane and its contents. Now, if it takes a 4.5 degree angle of attack at 110 knots to produce 2,500 pounds of lift sufficient to keep our 2,500 pound airplane in level flight, we feel a g-force of 1. 2,500 pounds this way and 2,500 pounds this way equals a g-force of 1. Now, if turbulence suddenly quadruples our angle of attack to 18 degrees, our wings will suddenly produce four times as much lift or 10,000 pounds of lift. With a weight of 2,500 pounds, we'll experience a g-force of 4. Now, if the airplane limit load factor was plus 4 g's, and it's typically 3.8 g's, but 4 g's makes for, well, easier math, then we won't exceed this value since the wings have reached an angle of attack of 18 degrees, which is the critical angle of attack for this airplane. Increase the angle of attack further and the airplane will stall. Okay, let's talk about how maneuvering speed is affected by weight. The airplane's posted maneuvering speed, VA, is based on the airplane being at max gross weight. That's right, maneuvering speed is technically only applicable to the airplane when it's at max gross weight. When the airplane operates at less than gross weight, its maneuvering speed decreases and is given a new name called operational maneuvering speed or operating maneuvering speed, otherwise symbolized as VO. In fact, many pilot operating handbooks show three different operational maneuvering speed for weights less than gross weight. Now, the question is, or at least it should be on your mind, why does the operational maneuvering speed decrease as the airplane's weight decreases? Well, here's why. Let's say that it takes a 4.5 degree angle of attack at 110 knots to maintain level flight in an airplane that is operating at its maximum gross weight of 2,500 pounds. Now, let's reduce the weight of that airplane by opening the door and tossing your flight bag out. Great. Now the airplane weighs 1,666 pounds. Yes, that's a mighty big flight bag, but you need a big bag to carry all 20 of those portable GPS units and that Van de Graaff generator you use to keep other airplanes away from you when they get too close in the traffic pattern. Flying at the lesser weight of 1,666 pounds at the same speed of 110 knots means the wings can operate at the lower angle of attack of 3 degrees in producing the lift necessary to maintain level flight. With a speed of 110 knots at the lower weight of 1,666 pounds, a sudden and very strong gust could increase the angle of attack from 3 to 18 degrees. In other words, the angle of attack would increase six times over its starting value of 3 degrees, and that would increase the lift our wings produce by six times, giving us a g-force or load factor of 6 g's. Now, if our limit load factor was 4 G's, then this is beyond the limit of what our airplane can safely handle. Since our weight is 1,666 pounds, it's less than the maximum allowable gross weight. So we need to do something to keep from exceeding our example limit load factor of 4 G's, 3.8 G's really, in turbulence. So what should we do? 
Well, the answer is to slow the airplane down. Let's say we slow the airplane down to 95 knots. This allows us to maintain level flight at an angle of attack of 4.5 degrees at 1,666 pounds. At this speed, we can increase the angle of attack four times above its original value before the wings reach their critical angle of attack and the airplane stalls. Therefore, 95 knots becomes our new maneuvering speed if we want to limit ourselves to 4 Gs. Thus, decreasing weight requires a decrease in the airplane's maneuvering speed. If your POH, Pilot Operating Handbook, doesn't provide operational maneuvering speed for different weights, then here's how to roll your own. For every 2% reduction in weight, reduce VA by 1%. In other words, if the gross weight decreases by 20%, reduce VA by 10%. Now, here's one last thought to consider. When flying at 110 knots at a weight of 2,500 pounds, a strong vertical gust would increase our angle of attack four times over its original value before the wing stalls. We would pull four Gs and the airplane wings would suddenly generate 10,000 pounds of lift in the process. At 1,666 pounds, the same strong vertical gust would increase our angle of attack six times over its original value before we stall. We would pull six Gs and the airplane wings would suddenly generate 10,000 pounds of lift in the process. Wait a minute. The wings in both instances are developing the same amount of lift, while in the latter instance, the G loading is greater because the airplane is lighter. So why will two extra G's hurt the wings if the total instantaneous lift developed in both instances by the wings is the same? Well, the fact is those two extra G's won't hurt the wings. The instantaneous lift developed by the wings at both the heavier and lighter weights is the same. Therefore, the wings experience the same amount of force applied to them. In other words, a force for which both wings have been designed to handle. You see, the problem here is not with the wings. It's with something called the airplane's fixed weight components. Now think about the airplane's engine mounts. They are designed to handle 4 Gs, or 4 times the weight of the engine without being damaged. Again, it's really 3.8 Gs. If the engine mounts are subject to a G-force of 6 Gs, they could break or deform. And the same idea applies to the floor of the baggage compartment, the floor under the seats of your airplane, and for that matter, the seats themselves. These are all considered to be fixed weight components, and they have an allowable stress limit of 4 Gs. If you pulled 6 Gs at lower weights because you didn't reduce your maneuvering speed to a new operational maneuvering speed, then these fixed weight components could become overstressed and be damaged, thus damaging the airplane. So this is why we reduce our speed to some new operational maneuvering speed at weights lower than maximum gross weight. And just to be clear, I've used 4 Gs here as the airplane's limit load factor to make the math easier. In reality, the normal limit load factor for a standard airworthy airplane is 3.8 positive Gs and negative 1.52 Gs. Well, I hope this makes the concept of maneuvering speed a little bit easier to understand. I've been Rod Machado. Safe flying to you.